live in this new age. I, I love uh, the quantum nature reality. Uh, there's a Heisenberg principle in quantum physics, and this is it. Our observation of events influence the events. I know a lot of you have heard that. Our observation of events influence events. So <clears throat> if we're looking at life with uh, fear-based eyes, we're going to influence life with a little fear vibe. If we look at life from a love base with loving eyes, we're going to influence life with that energy. See, this is the world that we live in now. This is the truth that we all know now. And it takes discipline now to, to stop ourselves from the thoughts first, you see, that end up coming out of our mouth and or, or even impel us to take action, you see. So to begin to pay attention to those thoughts because it is a fact now that they influence events. So when we uh, go within and ask to feel God's love, or share me with light, Father, fill me with your love, we begin to clear out the faulty thoughts, like lower vibrational thoughts of fear and negativity and, and control and manipulation. So we're going to be letting these go. We're letting go of these lower vibrational consciousness, and we're embracing that unconditional love of God, the light of God, our unlimited potential, creativity, joy, beauty, prosperity. We're, we're filling our, our body. We're filling the temple. We're cleansing it and filling it. We're letting go of that which doesn't serve us any longer, and now we're filling it with that which would support us. So we're raising our vibration, okay? So when we accelerate <clears throat> the frequency of anything, the form changes. When we accelerate the frequency, form changes. So as we begin to pull in the higher thoughts and consciousness within this vehicle, okay, we begin to change not only our body, but our world begins to change around us. The teachings in um, the New Testament, in uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, can be simplified to work on the inner to change the outer. And that's what a lot of the parables were all about. They were stories about their living and how they could change the way they were living. But first they had to change the way they were thinking. And then they began to change. And then John, John, were asked to believe. <coughs> Believe that uh, Jesus Christ was the Son of God. Believe that God's our Father. Believe that these things I do, you should do these and greater. So our spiritual progress accelerates when we become present in our thoughts. See, our spiritual awareness, our progress, accelerates when we're present in our thoughts. That's not being controlled by the past. Doesn't matter our last week or our lifetime ago. Being in the present, being in the moment, being in the awareness that God and I are one. That I'm a spiritual being. Spirit creates matter. You see, when we start walking like this, that takes discipline. Because we look at the news or the newspapers and they tell us what we should be experiencing in life. A real long time ago, and this was probably in the 90s or 80s or something, you know, when we, I don't know, started rocking and rolling on an economic level, and there was a bumper sticker that was the coolest thing. It's this is old news, but I don't have to say it. Um, there's a recession going on, but I choose not to participate. So that was like somebody had a nice little divine thought to slap on a bumper sticker so people could see that. Oh, wow, there is a recession going on, but I choose not to participate. So, wouldn't that take discipline? You know, we're being asked to be creative at this moment in time on planet Earth. And I think for about the last six months, a lot, I've had a lot of different clients 
And they're in their walk, they're in their unfoldment, and it's almost like they've kind of hit a wall or they've plateaued and they just can't move and they just don't feel that good because they want to keep moving. They want to keep growing, expanding, creating. And spirit is asking us to be creative. Spirit is asking us to do it a different way. Spirit's asking us to partner with God, with spirit, you see. And the paradox is, is when we partner with God, it's going to be a whole lot easier. That's where the brow thing will be getting out of the gym and not out in the fields. So it, it's really neat to understand it, but uh, to take the concepts and then discipline ourselves to them. You know, uh, you hear meditation, 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 meditation from me and from the church all the time. How uh, important meditation is, how empowering meditation is. But no one can make anybody meditation, and just knowing what the definition of meditation is, <coughs> is a meditation. You see, we got to get up early in the morning and go to your, your sacred space and uh, connect with God. Listen. Ask and then listen. Breathe and just allow the whole body to just let go and take no thought. See, our body's a miracle anyways. We don't have to tell it to breathe. We just need to let go. It's going to breathe itself. And then spirit's just going to start moving through. So discipline ourselves to uh, uh, meditations. It's very powerful to receive the Fuji no not. And then we're surrounded. We live in the information age. These are queer information age. There is so much information out there about everything. So, however, when you go on the uh, internet, use discernment and uh, salt shaker. Take it with a grain of salt. But go within. Get the information and take it within. See? God, can I use any of this? And you will be given that which you can let go and that which you can appropriate. Just because we live in the information age, we don't need to be overloaded with information, do we? What would serve us at this moment in time? So to discipline ourselves. See, what's mine to do here? What is my path now? Get the information that can serve me now. It's not forever. I'm going to walk into some new information down the road. But I want to be clear now. So too much information. Following your guidance, whatever, whenever, anything gets in the way of you following your guidance, you're following matter. You're not following spirit. And a lot of times we go, uh, yeah, but we get the Guides, we get the information, we get the experience to walk through as our blessing from spirit. And then we'll rationalize a uh, material way of looking at it and uh, make a choice from that. I want to read you, uh, th this is what some of us also experience. This is in 114. And um, Jesus is there walking with his disciples and there's a storm on the beach. and. Uh, there are fishermen, and a lot of fishermen are dead, and they're running around trying to help people and everything. And, and then after they saved all that they could save, Jesus talks to the men of the village and says, hey, we can't bring back these husbands and these fathers, but we can take care of the wives and the kids. So y'all dig into those coffers and let's just do it. And so they, he was opening up their heart, generous heart, steward of the wealth. So then, um, then Jesus turned to Judas, one of the twelve, who was treasurer of the band, and said, Bring forth our treasure box. The money's not ours. Turn every farthing to the help of those in such distress. Now Judas did not wish to give the money all to those in one. And so he talked with Peter, James, and John. He said, Lo, I'll save a certain part and give the rest. That surely is enough for us, for we're strangers to the ones in want. We don't even know their names. Now he got the guidance from 
spirit, right? Christ. You got the guy from Christ, his master, the one he's adhering to. So, so and he's trying to get Peter, James, and John to get a few more numbers and a little bit more strength, maybe. But Peter said, "Why, Judas, man? How do you dare to think to trifle with the strength of right? The Lord has spoken true. This wealth does not belong to us." in face of this distress, and to refuse to give is to steal. You need not fear, we will not come to one. Then Judas opened up the treasure box and gave all the money. So, Judas, a disciple, he got the director from Spirit, give all the money to the people in distress. Mm. Gosh, I don't know that all these people. Why should I give it all? We got to take care of ourselves, anyways. You know, we're got a thirty-mile walk ahead of us before we get to Bethany. We might need to stop at then or something. And hey, Peter, James, and John, what do you think? Judas is representative of ego controlling spirit. Ego controlling spirit. Have any of us allowed our ego to control spirit? Oh, I'll raise my hand. Yes. See. But Peter, say Peter goes, Judas, you silly boy, how can you even say that? This is what the master has told us to do. And see, Peter, Peter represents faith. See, Peter stands forth as a true disciple of the Christ now. And faith. Because he this way he tells um, Judas. You're in fear. Don't fear. See, God's with us always. We don't need to fear. If we follow our spiritual guidance, we're going to be taken care of. So, Peter, James, and John, Peter, faith, James, wisdom, John, love. Those are the three disciples that were paramount in all of Jesus' activities. And he always took those with him. And he did any major happenings. So, as we walk in our life, we're going to get the guidance. Be ever vigilant. What's mine to do? What would that look like? And then, if our ego comes up, get thee behind thee. Get thee behind thee. It's as simple as that. Be in the moment. Be in the moment. That money that they had wasn't their money. It was given to them. They were stewards and just flowing it. Life is flow. Life is flow. And that's, I think, a big lesson that we're to learn in the new community also, is life is flow. Life is flow. So to begin to understand what is mine to do, understand that we are not alone. God is always with us. And then we're at this beautiful family of man beautiful family men to love and support one another in anything. That's the world that I want to create. That's the world that we want to create. That's the world we're creating. And all the dear young souls that are coming in, you can see it, can't you? The kids are so beautiful. They're so loving. They're so altruistic. They're definitely expressing their divinity. We live in some good times. Look for the good, and you'll find good. Let's go with that. So let's just close our eyes once again and just breathe. Breathing in God's love and allowing God's love to just fill your body. Feel that love flowing across your chest now. And just be aware of your heart center beginning to grow in its unique radiance of love and light. Just breathe and feel the presence, how real love is. How real love is and how close love is. So just breathe and feel your unique love, your unique light. And with each breath, it just grows and expands until it begins to overflow, sending waves of love throughout your whole body, divine love, cleansing the temple, and as these waves of love begin to sweep through your body, 
if there's any old patterns or thoughts that you're aware of that you're ready to let go of, just ask that this love, this divine love of God, begin to wash away those patterns that no longer serve you, that might limit you. Let them wash away a false identity of less than. Let them wash away anything and everything that does not serve you at this moment in time, in this new age. So just breathe and, and ask. Ask your Heavenly Father. You are the beloved child. And as you ask, it is done. So allow these waves of love to just begin to cleanse your temple. And as you breathe, just, just feel your vibration begin to, to quicken. Just allow that smile to form on your lips as you know that as you've asked, you have received. To know that you are the precious child of our Heavenly Father. And to know that you're good. So just breathe and, and feel your energy now. Lighter and freer and clearer. Be still and know, this is who you are. Be still and know, I am. Be still and know, I am with you always. So just breathe and feel and know, I am. Feel your feet on the floor, your connection with Mother Earth. Glad to be alive on planet Earth at this moment in time. Be still and know. I am with you always. And just gently with your toes and fingers. And when you're ready, just gently open your eyes. So a question that we could all ask ourselves is, what do I have to change to move into greater awareness of God? Releasing. Get God trapped with a spiritual life. <coughs> connecting with that Christ within. And then begin to invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. I'm with you always. And so it is.